Barry Perry is the CEO of Ford. Is Barry, how does it feel down there on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange? Feels fantastic. <laughs> I bet. I, I wonder, though, you guys already trade on the TSX. What, why is it important for you as a company to be able to trade on the New York Stock Exchange? Well, it was important, uh, Peter, because we now expanded into the U.S. We bought three utilities in the United States, and actually we delisted those three from the NYSE. So we thought it was appropriate to put Fortis on the NYSE and to open, uh, open ourselves up to that uh, deep pool of capital that's here in the, in the United States. Once you guys do close that deal of ITC, 60% uh, of your holdings will be in the U.S. Is, is that where you see growth for your company in the, in the coming years? I do, actually, because in Canada, really, what's remaining uh, in terms of our sector is mostly in government hands, like big crown corporations and city-owned utilities, and we don't see those assets being privatized uh, anytime soon. The U.S. model is much more of an investor-owned utility model, and uh, we, we do believe there will be further opportunities for Fortis to grow once we integrate ITC. I just want to zoom out for a second to the, to the bigger picture, because it's interesting. You guys have made this enormous deal. We've seen a couple of others, uh, Enbridge, of course, buying a Canadian company, buying the U.S. company. The trend, I think, for a lot of us is we see it going the other way. What is happening that's allowing these deals to happen right now, especially given the low loony? Why are these, these deals so attractive at this moment? Well, we've managed to put deals together that are accretive to EPS for our shareholders. You know, we, we've been in the business a long time, so we have tremendous expertise both in the gas and electric utility business. And uh, the regulation in both countries between Canada and the U.S. is the same, intensive cost of service regulation, and we're used to that environment. So I don't think it should be surprising that Fortis is having success in, uh, in the U.S. regulated utility environment. What, what is this going to mean both for customers and for investors? I'll ask first about customers and then about investors, because now you'll have a whole lot of U.S. shareholders to answer to as well. But first, what does this deal offer for, for your customers? Is there any sort of streamlining that, that will allow? There'll be a little bit of that. There's some public company costs that we can eliminate for ITC once they come off the uh, off the, the NYSE here. But uh, I think from a customer perspective, it's just being part of a large organization that has tremendous expertise, whether it be in IT and operations, customer service, that we can be benefit from that in all parts of our operations. And uh, I think that's uh, that's what we bring the, bring to the customer equation. In terms of investors clearly being uh, owning a much more diversified company, we'll be in uh, nine U.S. states, five Canadian provinces, and three Caribbean countries. Po you know now that we've owned, we own ITC, so I think uh, that that lowers our overall business risk. And you know, investors in our sector like that. They like the dividends, uh, sort of continuity and growth, and uh, that's what Fortis brings to the table. Is, is there some concern now, though, that there, you know, the the power of those initial shares will there's going to be a lot more people with with a, a different take on what they want the company to do now that you're expanding into the U.S. at such a rate? I don't think so. You know, it's our job as management really to get out and meet our shareholders and cultivate the kind of shareholders we want investing in the company. We're, you know, we're really focused on retail shareholders and, sh and institutional shareholders who have a long-term view on our industry. Clearly, you know, the market is the market and we'll have other players who want to be involved in the stock. But our focus as a team will be on those sort of shareholders who take a long-term view of our business and want to own uh, an income-oriented stock. And being able to do that, of course, will require setting up operations and getting people down into the United States. Will jobs be leaving Canada to go to the U.S. as part of this deal? That's the beauty of the Fortis model, Peter. It's not, uh, that's not how we operate. We actually, uh, with these three utility businesses we bought in the United States, we haven't put any Canadians down into those businesses. We've kept the management teams in place. Uh, those, those folks will continue to operate their business. So we just have a very small head office back in St. John's, Newfoundland, about 45 folks working for us there. And uh, all of our other people are basically at the local operating utility level. And that makes our model pretty scalable as we look for new opportunities as well. And our regulators support that model as well. So, so overall, we think it's the right approach for owning utilities in North America. You took over this company, I believe it was 2014. Can you just tell me what sort of a ride this has been like in taking this company from where it was then to a moment like this and being able tomorrow to ring the bell at, uh, at the New York Stock Exchange? 
But it's been an amazing ride, and it's not just me, obviously. My team has been with me. And I would say the forerunners of Stan Marshall and Ang Angus Bruno, where the prior CEOs of Fortis, have a big part to play in this as well. But Fortis has been an amazing success story. I hope that uh, me and my team can, can keep that going forward. And tomorrow we're going to ring the bell on the New York Stock Exchange after 130 years being in business. We started in St. John's, Newfoundland in October 1885. We put the lights on in St. John's for the first time. And now we're finally ringing the bell on, the, on NYSE. So that's a nice bookend to this, uh, this phase of our growth. No doubt. I'm sure you're down there with a big team. Last question, who gets to actually push the button to ring the bell? Now that'd be me. I, uh, <laughs> rank, rank has to have some privileges. I've been using that uh, slogan from my uh, prior CEO, and uh, so I'll be ringing the bell. All right. Well, we'll be watching tomorrow. Thanks a lot for this. Thank you. Bye-bye, Peter.